Today we're going to look at a nice exponential diophantine equation. So our goal is to find all positive integers m and n so that m to the nth power is equal to n to the m minus nth power. Okay, so let's jump right into the solution. So let's first notice that m being a natural number implies that m to the n is most definitely also a natural number. But then that implies that n to the m minus n is going to be a natural number bigger than or equal to 1. But let's see. If this is bigger than or equal to 1, then that makes the exponent here bigger than or equal to 0. So we have m minus n is bigger than or equal to 0, which means that m is bigger than or equal to n. And now let's split that into two cases. So perhaps the first case would be the case when m is equal to n, and then the second case would be when m is strictly greater than n. So let's observe that if m is equal to n, plugging that into our original equation immediately gives us the following. So we have m to the nth power is equal to well, n to the zero, but n to the zero is one. But observe that if m to the n is one, then that means that m is equal to one and n is also equal to one. So that gives us our, e, our solution of m and n both being equal to one. And that's gonna be, well, like I said, whenever m is equal to n. So now let's go on to our second major case here, which is the case if m is strictly bigger than n, which, like I said, we get from splitting this inequality. Now we're going to use a fairly common strategy. So let's observe here that we've got a single equation but two unknowns. But it's a little bit easier to solve if we have a single equation and a single unknown. And maybe the most obvious single unknown that we can easily get to here is m over n. And how can we build an m over n equation out of this magenta boxed equation? Well, let's maybe divide both sides by n to the nth power and see what that leaves us with. Okay, so let's say that this squiggly arrow is dividing our original equation by n to the nth. So that's going to give us m to the nth over n to the nth on the left hand side. And then over there on the right hand side, we're going to have n to the m minus 2n. But now let's extend off this left hand side and observe that this is m over n raised to the n power. And now, now let's take the nth root of both sides. So let's see, taking the nth root of both sides will simply give us an m over n on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll have n to the power m over n minus 2. Okay, so, well, observe here that we still have two variables. We've got m over n as a single variable and then n as a single variable. So there's a little bit of work to do in order to get rid of that n. But we can do a little bit of a simplification using an inequality. Now let's observe that we can immediately assume that n is bigger than or equal to 2. And well, I'll let you look at the details, but if n is equal to 1, then m is necessarily equal to 1. So we might as well assume that n is bigger than or equal to 2. But that means here we can write this or extend an inequality by saying that what we have here is bigger than or equal to 2 to the m over n minus 2. And then maybe if we introduce a new variable, let's set x equal to m over n, and let's note that that gives us the following inequality. We have x is bigger than or equal to 2 to the x minus 2. But perhaps we could multiply both sides of this by 4. That's going to cancel this minus 2 in the exponent. And we have 4x is bigger than or equal to 2 to the x power. So just to reiterate what we've got going on here, if we have a solution to our original equation where m is larger than n, then 
well, this x, which is equal to m over n, must satisfy this inequality that 4x is bigger than or equal to 2 to the x. But observe here that we've got a polynomial being bigger than or equal to an exponential function. But we know that exponential functions will grow much, much more quickly than polynomials. So that means that there's going to be only a finite number of values where this is satisfied. And we can figure out that finite number of variables by uh, maybe looking at a bit of a chart and taking that motivation to prove a little lemma. So let's build this chart where we've got inputs x and then outputs 4x and 2 to the x. So let's see, we know that x is going to be bigger than 1. We know that x is going to be bigger than 1 because m is bigger than n. So we might as well start with 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. So that should be far enough to see what's going on here. So multiplying by 4, we pretty uh, obviously get 8, 12, 16, 20, and then let's see, that'll be 24. And then 2 to the x. So 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 5th is 32, 2 to the 6th is 64. So let's look at this and the only numbers where our inequality is satisfied are those numbers 2, 3, and 4. And well, what would we need to do to prove that, well, there's no switch that happens down the line? Well, I think we could cover that with the following lemma. And that is for all x bigger than or equal to 5, we have 4x is strictly less than 2 to the x. Okay, so how could we prove that? Well, perhaps we'll prove that with induction. So notice our base case is taken care of right here. And that's because if you plug in 5, you see that 4x is most definitely less than 2 to the x. So we might as well just jump straight to the induction step. So let's suppose this is true for x equals k, and then we'll consider the next case. So in other words, we're going to consider 4 times k plus 1. But let's observe that that's equal to 4k plus 4, which is strictly less than 4k plus 4k. Okay, but notice that that's equal to 8 times k. Oh, but 8 times k is equal to 2 times 4k. But then we know that 4k, since we're supposing our statement is true for x equals k, is going to be less than 2 to the k. So this is less than 2 times 2 to the k, which is equal to 2 to the k plus 1. And then following this from the extreme left to the extreme right part of this inequality, we see that, yeah, we have shown that our inequality is true, assuming that it is true for the kth case. And then, well, like I said before, we already proved it for a base case. So that means, well, this limit is proven, meaning that the only possible solutions can come inside of this orange box. So now all we have to do is check all of these possibilities. So let's do that. So we just narrowed down the possible values of m over n to 2, 3, and 4. And now we'll just check each of these individually. So let's say, first of all, we'll do m over n equals 2, which is the same thing, obviously, as saying that m is equal to 2 times n. But if m is equal to 2 times n, well, let's just go ahead and plug that into our original equation here. So let's see, that means we're going to have 2 times n to the nth power is equal to n to the, let's see, it'll be 2n minus n. In other words, we're going to have n to the nth power. But, oh, we see that this is going to give us a problem pretty quickly. And that is because this is going to turn into 2 to the n times n to the n equals n to the n. In other words, we'll have 2 to the n equals 1, which means that n is equal to 0. But we originally said that we're working inside of the natural numbers or positive integers. 
So this isn't a solution that we're actually going to want to consider. Okay, so now let's move on to the next case. And that next case is the case when m over n is equal to 3. So let's see. If m over n is equal to 3, then that means we have m equals 3 times n. Now let's plug that into our original equation. So that means we have 3 to the n times n to the n is equal to, well, what is it going to be? It's going to be n to the 2 times n. So n, like I said, to the 2 times n. But observe that that's the same thing as n to the n times n to the n. Then we can cancel an n to the n from both sides of this equation, and we see that we get 3 to the n is equal to n to the n. In other words, we have n is equal to 3. But if n is equal to 3, then that means that m is equal to 9, and we have our next solution, which is 9 comma 3. So while we're at it, let's put some boxes here around the solutions that we have. So our original solution, mn equals 1, 1, and now our newest solution, mn equals 9, 3. Okay, so now let's finish this off with the very last case which is m over n equals 4, which is the same thing as saying that m equals 4n. And then, again, running through this really quickly, that means that 4 to the n times n to the n is equal to, well, it's going to be n to the 3n in this case. So n to the 3n, like I said. But that's going to be n to the n times n to the 2n. Okay, and then again, we can cancel an n to the n from both sides of this equation like that. And well, what does that mean? Well, notice that we can extend this off the left and observe that this is equal to 2 to the power 2n. Oh, but that means that n is equal to 2. So we've got n is equal to 2. But then by our relationship right here, that means that m is equal to 8. Oh, but that gives us our last solution of 8 comma 2. Okay, so there we have it. We've just shown that there are exactly three solutions to our original equation. They are mn equals 1, 1, 9, 3, or 8, 2. And that's a good place to stop.